Barba, uh, Thomas Barba. Yeah, he's first on my list anyway. Um, last. Oh, last? Okay, oh, sure. Okay. Yes, he is a uh, high-risk inmate. All right, do you have anyone that needs the services of an interpreter? I have been in the seat. Right. Yes, Your Honor, we have one. Tell me who he is. It's a female. Okay. Yes, come on. Uh, let's see, she is Moyena, Moyeno Talavar. She's an add on. Okay. All right, so when we get started, we'll take her first, okay? Okay. All right. Thank this you. is initial appearances. Okay. Appearance for the record, please. Abraham El Mazahi on behalf uh, John, of the state uh, of Florida. All right. Defense. Robert Wesley, public defender. All right. And PTR. John Marino, PTR. Okay. Dalia uh, Romero, Spanish interpreter, Your Honor. All right. All right, ma'am, tell me your name. Señora, por favor, dígame su nombre. Yasiris Moyeno. Yasiris Moyeno. All right, ma'am, is your first language Spanish? Su primer idioma, señora, es el español. Sí, señora. Yes, right. ma'am. Here with me, I have a Spanish interpreter, court appointed. Aquí conmigo tengo una intérprete de español que ha sido designada por el tribunal. If at any time you don't understand what she's saying, please tell us to stop and we'll rectify the situation. Si en algún momento usted no entiende lo que ella está diciendo, por favor, díganos que paremos para rectificar la situación. All right, ma'am, you are entitled to have an attorney okay. through each stage of the litigation to include today. Señora, usted tiene el derecho de tener un abogado que le represente en todas las etapas de este alegato, incluyendo en el día de hoy. Everything here is being recorded. Todo aquí hoy está siendo grabado. You have a fifth amendment right to remain silent. Usted tiene el derecho de la quinta enmienda de guardar silencio. Anything that you say about this matter could be used against you in, Cual in the future. Cualquier cosa que usted diga aquí en este caso en el día de hoy puede ser usado en su contra en el futuro. So I just want you to respond to my questions, okay? Así que solo quiero que respuesta, que conteste mis preguntas, bien? Sí. Yes. Sí, señora. Yes, ma'am. All right, ma'am, you've been detained on an allegation of violation of conditions of release. There was a no contact order that was issued in 2019 MM3083. I will provisionally appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent you in this matter. Mr. Wesley, do you know yet if she qualifies, or is that something that you would not know for, from this We end? don't know, Judge. Okay. So I'll provisionally so, appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent you, ma'am, in the matter. Señora, usted ha sido detenida en un caso de incumplimiento de una orden de alejamiento que se le había ordenado que no podía tener contacto en el caso 2019-MM3083. Provisionalmente se le está designando el defensor público para que les represente. I've read the probable cause charging affidavit and I did find probable cause. Yo he leído la uh, acusación y hallo que hay causas que respaldan la causa. Given what I'm looking at, ma'am, I am going to release you on your recognizance in this matter. Uh, basado en lo que yo estoy viendo, señora, yo le voy a permitir salir bajo palabra. However, I want to make it very clear to you. Pero quiero que le quede bien claro a usted. That you are to have no contact whatsoever, and that means directly or indirectly. Que usted no puede tener ningún tipo de contacto o comunicación, ya sea directo o indirecto with the victim in this matter, Mr. Juan Rivera. Con la víctima de este caso, el señor Juan Rivera. You are to follow all court orders to include the no contact order that was issued in 2019 MM3083. Usted tiene que obedecer todas las uh, órdenes, los mandatos judiciales que se le implementaron en el caso 2019-3083. Do you understand all that, ma'am? Entiende usted todo esto, señora. Sí, señora, pero yo también quería pedirle a ella que por favor ponga una orden de restricción porque él eh, trata de buscarme a mí. Yes, Your Honor, but I did want to ask you to issue an injunction because he's the one that looks uh, has been looking for me. 
Ma'am, you're not gonna need to take care of that through the domestic violence court. There are forms you can fill out. You can go down to the Osceola County Courthouse, talk to the folks at domestic violence, and they can further instruct you, okay? Señora, usted eso va a tener que resolverlo yendo al tribunal y hablando con la División de Violencia Doméstica. Eh, allá es que usted va a tener que ir y comunicarse con ellos y hacer los arreglos pertinentes para eso. Thank you, ma'am. Gracias, señora. Gracias. Thank you. All right. Your Honor, may, may we call um, Thomas Barbara Aviles, actually? Oh. Okay, so you want him next? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Mr. Thomas Barbot Aviles. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. All right. Before I get started with him, I just want to make a general announcement to all of you. There is an attorney from the Office of the Public Defender here present in the courtroom with me at uh, the Orange County uh, Booking and Release Center. The attorney is not present with you. He is here hearing everything, though, on your behalf. All of you would enjoy a Fifth Amendment right to remain silent. Please do not tell me anything about the facts of the case. Just simply respond, please, to the questions that I ask you. Everything here is being recorded, and it could be used against you in the future if you say something about the facts of the case that is incriminating in nature, especially. All right, sir. I've reviewed a probable cause charging affidavit that charges you with aggravated battery uh, with a, I have a question. permanent disfigurement. Sir, I'm speaking. I have a question. Yes, sir. Um, when the cop asked me, I know this is all recorded. I'm not worried. I, I've been pro se before. Sir, I'm going when, to ask you. When the you cop to, asked me, I'm stop, stop. I'm going to ask you to stop. Let me finish what I am saying, and then I'll give you an opportunity to speak. Okay? Yes, right. ma'am. Thank you. All right. I do find probable cause. Bond is set in this matter in the sum of thirty-five hundred dollars. Bond will remain in that amount. Conditions of your release, sir, will be that you not return to the Sun Inn and Suites. You not have any contact with the victim in the matter. You not possess any weapons or any firearms. Now, you were out on bond at the time of this arrest. You have arraignment in front of Judge Morgan in 2019 CF 1868. I will find that there's probable cause for a violation of your conditions of pretrial release to be found. I do so find, and I am going to revoke your bond in 2019 CF 1868, hold you without bond in that matter. Again, you have arraignment on September the 6th. Now, sir, I previously told you that everything here is being recorded. You will have an that's attorney that's really going to discuss this matter with you from the Office of the Public Defender. That's fine, I'm not worried about it. I told the officer that I felt, I told the officer when he asked me, when he asked me what happened, we're not going to state the facts of what happened, but we are going to state the fact that I did present, that I, I felt imminent danger, and there was a recording of what happened. There was three statements of other people that, only two that I know and one that I don't know, and they all said the same thing. The officer said, I do not care what the witness state what the video, the facts of the video are, the fact that you state that you pled imminent danger, okay. and he arrested me. Well, sir, you so, may have like, what's up? You may have a defense to this. You may have a defense of self-defense or it's, some it's, it's, other defense, but that's not, not that's not what today's about. Okay, today is not about you, the merits of the You're reading the facts. Case. You're reading the narrative that states that 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 is probable cause, but there is no there's you have not read nothing about. My side, he didn't give me the chance to write anything down. He didn't even put the facts inside. All he wrote is, Mr. Barbeau intentionally, Mr. Barbeau intentionally, Mr. Barbeau intentionally. I, I ask that you review the whole case before you find probable cause, because if not, I want to be RR. All right. I've reviewed the probable cause charging affidavit, sir, and based on the four corners of that, I've found probable cause. Again, you might have a defense to this. That's not for today. All right. Thank you, sir. Yeah, but in my bond, I can't even bond out because you find probable cause, which means I violate my PTR. I done been pro se. I know what I'm talking about. 
I understand, sir. Thank you. All right, next up we have Jadisi Bird. Good morning, ma'am. Are you Ms. Bird? Yes. Ma'am, I reviewed a probable cause charging affidavit that charges you with retail theft. I do find probable cause. Bond is set in that matter in the sum of $500. I will stay bond in that amount with the following conditions. You will not return to any Walmart in the United States. I will provisionally appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent you. Ma'am, I need you to, be under, uh, to understand that you must keep the Office of the Public Defender as well as the court file updated with any changes of address, okay? I do know that you might have okay. some changes of address that happen. Your court dates are going to be sent to the last known address. So if you change, it's very important that you update the court file with that address so you will get notice, okay? Yes, ma'am. Any questions about that? Um, is the bond so how much? It's 10% of the bond, right? Ma'am, that's between you and a bondsman. That's what I'm told. Yes, ma'am. All right, there is a warrant okay, out of uh, Georgia as well for driving on a suspended license, but there's no extradition on that, okay? Okay, thank, thank you. you. All right, next up is Jesus Calzada Rodriguez. Good morning, sir. Sir, you're being detained on a warrant for failure to appear. The issuing magistrate, Judge Wooten, has set bond in count one and some of 500, count two, 500, for a total bond of 1,000. Bond will remain in that matter. Any conditions of release that he uh, put in place at the time of the execution of the warrant will remain in place. Thank you, sir. Jason Faresh. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning, sir. Sir, you're being detained on an allegation of battery. I have reviewed the probable cause charging affidavit. I decline to find probable cause in this matter. I am going to release you on your own recognizance in this case. Um, I will appoint the office, I will provisionally appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent you in this matter. Okay. All right, there is a, a Kathleen Garcia Rodriguez. She, uh, she refused, Your Honor. All right, so we'll reset her for tomorrow. Stacy Hunter. Good morning. Are you Miss Hunter? Good morning. Are you Miss Hunter? Yes. Okay. Ms. Hunter, I reviewed a probable cause charging affidavit. It charges you with possession of a controlled substance without a prescription and possession of drug paraphernalia. I do find probable cause. I will provisionally appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent you. PTR, she qualifies for straight release? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Ma'am, I will release you to pretrial release with the following condition. You will have to subject yourself to uh, random urinalyses for the presence of controlled substances. You may not uh, have in your possession or utilize any controlled substances that are not legally and validly prescribed to you by a physician. Do you understand? Yes. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Jeannie Hamilton. Uh, 
Uh, Your Honor, she's still in the hospital. Oh. Reset for 9-3 according to these notes. Is it? Okay. So reset for 9-3. You're correct. I mean, it's a reset Anything for tomorrow. Else? Excuse oh. me. Okay. okay, Your Honor. Emmanuel Marconzi. Good morning, sir. Sir, I've reviewed a probable cause charging affidavit. It charges you with battery. I will find probable cause. I am going to go ahead, sir, and release you to pretrial release with the condition that you not have uh, any contact with the named victim in the matter maintain a separate residence. I am going to set bond in the sum of $100 with pretrial release conditions, as I've noted. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, sir, please make sure that you uh, keep the court file as well as your attorney updated with all changes of address. In terms of any court notices, they will be sent to your last known address. So if we don't have a good workable address on you, you may not get notice, okay? Okay, sir, Your Honor. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Can I can I pay the bond right now? Your bond is a hundred dollars plus okay. conditions of release through pretrial release, as I've stated. Chandra Malden. Good morning, ma'am. Ma'am, I reviewed to preach a, a probable cause charging affidavit. It charges you with driving on a suspended license, and it also charges you with uh, possession of a controlled substance without a prescription and possession of drug paraphernalia. I do find probable cause. As to the driving on a suspended license, bond will be reduced in that matter to $1,000. As to the possession of a controlled substance, it will remain at a thousand. <clears throat> as to the, as to the uh, possession of drug paraphernalia, it will be reduced to 100. I am going to also release you to pretrial release with the condition that you subject yourself to random urinalyses for the presence of controlled substances in your system. Ma'am, you may not be in possession of any controlled substances that are not legally and validly prescribed to you by a physician. Yes, ma'am. All right, I will provisionally appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent you in this matter as well, ma'am. Again, please keep the court file as well as your attorney apprised of all changes in address because you will get notice of court dates to that last known address. So it's imperative that we know what is a good mailing address for you, okay? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Bond plus PTR in both cases. Yes. Oh, no, I, I apologize. Just as to the, the drug case, yes. Mike Ramos. Mike Ramos. Uh, oh, that's right. Your Honor, he's still in the hospital. Is he? All right, that'll be reset to tomorrow. Yes. Pablo Rodriguez. Good afternoon, ma'am. Oh, we're almost there, aren't we? All right, sir. I've reviewed a probable cause charging affidavit. It charges you with an expired driver's license, more than six months in duration. Based on your admissions I, in the uh, probable cause charging affidavit, I will find probable cause. I will provisionally appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent you. You do qualify for pretrial release, so I will straight release you to pretrial release without monetary conditions. Again, sir, please keep the court file updated as to any changes of address as well as your attorney. All right? Okay, ma'am, I got this number for this, for this gentleman. Yeah, so it takes, I'll get it in a minute. All right. All right. All right, thank you, sir. 
Christian Samatsi. Bless you. I don't know if I'm saying that last name correctly. I'm sorry, ma'am. How do you say your last name? Is that Mary? All right. All right, Ms. Zatmary, uh, you are being detained on uh, a warrant out of Indian River County. It's for failure to appear on some drug charges. Bond was set by the ma issuing magistrate in the sum of zero. The bond will remain. All right. I, Indian River County will uh, come and uh, get you, ma'am. If they don't, tell someone there at the jail about that. I'm not going to provisionally appoint the Office of the Public Defender unless, of course, there's a request to do so for transport. All right, and there is not. So what I want you to do is make sure that if they don't come get you in uh, 48 hours, you let somebody know there at the jail, okay? Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Hermes Valentin. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Sir, I've reviewed a probable cause charging affidavit that charges you with driving while license suspended with knowledge. I will find probable cause. Provisionally appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent you in the matter. Bond in the matter will remain at five hundred dollars. Right, thank you, sir. Lastly, I have Joshua Torres. Yes, John. How are you doing? Good, sir. How are you? I'm well. How are you doing? I'm good. All right, so you're being detained on an out-of-county child support warrant. There is a thousand yes, dollar uh, bond. There's a thousand dollar bond on that. A... Yes. Okay. All right, sir. Thank you. I think that it is a this discrepancy because I just got out of jail uh, two months ago. Um, I paid as a there's a twenty five hundred twenty five hundred um, purge on it. I got out of it. Uh, they gave me two months to get out, and I've been paying my child support. Uh, I've been paying weekly, uh, fifty dollars. Uh, there's, um, I don't know why. I'm currently a road for sale. I'm a, I'm a student for sale. Uh, I've been paying it through um, online. I have no idea why I got this. I've been, been, I've been paying my child support. All right, well, hold, hold on one second. Can you look up DR 13, 2013, 14495, Madam Clerk? Can
Sir, on August the 16th, Magistrate Winslow issued a writ for your arrest. Uh, there was a failure to appear at a hearing. Can you pull that up and install the case? I don't know how many child support cases you may have going on, but this is the Department of Revenue on behalf of uh, Stephanie Alaron, or excuse me, A L A R C O N. Okay, is that the one you're thinking of? August the 16th. You failed to appear for court. There was a uh, writ issued and there was a purge of a thousand dollars. There is a rear jap affidavit of child support. So that's not showing me what you think uh, is happening. It's showing me something different. Okay, it's showing me that there was a hearing. You failed to appear. There is an arrearage in child support, and a, a writ was uh, ordered, and that's what you're being detained on. You can bond out at a thousand. Okay. All right, sir. Thank you. What was that? All right. Thank you. All right. So we have anything else in Osceola County? Uh, no, Your Honor. That's it. All right. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. All right, appearances for the record, please. Abraham El Mazahi on behalf of the state of Florida. And Manuel Soto Diaz with the Office of Public Defender. Diane Romero, state certified Spanish interpreter. Sir, tell me your name. Misael Rodriguez Sanchez. Misael Rodriguez Sanchez. All right. Mr. Sanchez, you're being detained on an allegation of violation of the terms of your supervised probation. You were placed on probation for the offense of battery domestic violence. The allegation is that you failed to complete the special term of your probation of battered intervention and that you have failed to comply with the condi conditions of collection court. I will amend the pretrial release in that matter to be, you'll be held on a no bond status with regard to those allegations of violation of probation. I do find probable cause. I will provisionally appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent you in the matter, sir. There is also, sir, as you may be aware, a hold on you through the Immigration and Naturalization Service, an ICE hold. Is there anything further that we need to take care of on this defendant? Thank you, sir. Next up, I have Oscar Varillas.
Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Tell me your name. Oscar Enrique Varillas. All right, I've reviewed a probable cause charging affidavit, sir, that charges you with battery domestic violence. I do find probable cause. I will provisionally appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent you. Mm -hmm. I will set bond, sir, in the sum of $500. Special conditions of your release, sir, will be that you will have no contact whatsoever with the victim in the matter. That means no contact directly or indirectly, no asking third parties to get word to the victim, no posting things on social media mm -hmm. that are designed to get to the victim. You will maintain a separate residence from the victim. You will also, sir, not be in possession of any firearms or any weapons. Mm -hmm. Do you have any personal belongings that you have at 423 South Buena Vista Avenue that you need to collect? I'm sorry, Your Honor, can you repeat the address? Do you have any personal belongings at 423 South Buena Vista Avenue that you need to collect? I will allow a return to the residence with law enforcement one time mm -hmm. for the purposes of collecting any personal belongings. Mm -hmm. I will provisionally appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent you. Sir, please keep the court to file as well as your attorney updated of all changes of address. If you have a court date, it will be sent, notif notice of that court date will be sent to your last known address. And if you don't keep us updated, we will send it to mm -hmm. the address that is on record. So make sure, again, that you keep us updated of any changes of address. Okay. This defendant has an ice hold? Hang on one second. Okay. All right, sir, I'm told that you do have an ice hold in this matter, or you do have an ice hold. All right. Thank you, sir. Next up is uh, I have uh, Gustavo Garcia. Sí, señor. <coughs> Sir, a warrant was uh, issued for your failure to appear at trial management conference. Bond was set by the issuing judge in the sum of zero. Bond will remain in that amount. I'll provisionally appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent you in the matter, sir. Thank you, sir. Your Honor, he's telling me that this case has been disposed of. I'm sorry, I was moving on to the next one for the record. This is Mr. Garcia. Gustavo Garcia. Yes. 19 CF 4038. Can I have the PC affidavit back on that? Your Honor, can right. I take a brief so moment to see? There is a uh, warrant. He's telling me that this 2019 CF 4038 has been closed. That's what he communicated to me. All right. Yes. So you can take a brief moment and check if Th you wish. Thank you. Thank you.
Yeah, no, I don't, I don't see a disposition, so okay. he must be confused. Right. Yes. Right, right. It remains open, sir. Thank you. Alexander Rivera. Good afternoon, sir. I reviewed a probable cause charging affidavit, Mr. Rivera. It charges you with possession of cocaine, possession of methamphetamine, resisting an officer without violence, and possession of drug paraphernalia. I do find probable cause. Bond in that case, sir, will remain at $1,000 account one, 150 in count two, 100 in count three, 100 in count four. Special conditions of your release will be that you not be in possession of any substances that are not legally and validly prescribed to you by a physician. I will provisionally appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent you. Sir, we have an address for you as transient. Please know that it is your responsibility to keep the court file updated as to all changes of address. Any notice of a future court date will be sent to you at the last address that we have. You have now been appointed an attorney from the Office of the Public Defender. So please stay in close contact with that office. Advise them of any changes that you have or any viable address that you have. Also keep them advised of a telephone number or contact for you. Do you understand that, sir? So that's all? Yes, sir. Bonds will remain the same amount. So if you bond out, I want you to keep in touch with them. All right, so we're now in the move ups, correct? All right, thank you, Madam Interpreter. Your Honor, Mr. Baswell, is going to help? All right, so Mr. Baswell will be reset for tomorrow. Sylvester Blue, also mental health. Thank you. Reset for tomorrow. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Frankie Borges is behaving. Reset for tomorrow. All right, so we should have Gregory Campbell. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Campbell. Good afternoon. Mr. Campbell, uh, you were detained for an allegation of violation of the terms of your supervised probation. You were placed on probation for uh, throwing a deadly missile. And the condition violation alleged is a condition one. And it advises that you fail to report as instructed on July the 22nd. of 2019, I do find probable cause. There is a condition three violation alleged as well, essentially indicating the same thing, that you were released from jail, you failed to report, and your whereabouts were unknown. Issuing magistrate uh, issued uh, a warrant setting bond in the sum of zero. Bond will remain in that amount. I will provisionally, I will appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent you in the matter. Thank you, sir. Angel Capel Santiago? It's medical, Your Honor. Okay. Be reset to tomorrow. Are you Ronald Colley? Uh. Mr. Colley, a arrest warrant was uh, signed in this matter. Judge Arendis having found probable cause for the offense of criminal mischief with property damage over $1,000. Bond was set <clears throat> by the issuing magistrate 
<clears throat> in the sum of a thousand dollars bond will remain in that amount as well as all conditions of release will remain in that amount <coughs> excuse me I don't think there were any conditions of release <coughs> conditions of your release will be that you would not return the scene of the offense you have no contact with the named victim in the matter <coughs> we'll appoint the office of the public defender to represent you as well in this case sir all right thank you <coughs> Shane Joffrey Set him for tomorrow's refusal. Derek Coates is a mental health. All right, let's reset him for tomorrow's mental health. This is Mr. Manny. Thank you. All right, this is Obinson Manny. Yes. I saw you yesterday, did I not, sir? Yesterday, I went. Yeah, I had to, um, felt certain I did. Okay. So the note that I have is Mr. Um, Manny is here to just address the ICE detainer. Is that accurate? the Office of the Public Defender provisionally to represent him in the matter. Just as to the detainer, is that something that the, the courts have been doing in, with the PD's office? I've provided him with a copy. I'm sorry? And I've provided him with a copy All right. of the but detainer. Have the courts been provisionally appointing the Office of the Public Defender on these detainers? No, usually we, we uh, deal with any matter regarding the ICE detainer, uh, kind of like as an ancillary <laughs> service through whatever other matter we're representing them through. All right, then I will not provisionally appoint the Office of the Public Defender then. I'll retract that. All right, sir, um, I've been told that you've been given a copy of the immigration detainer. Have you not? It is. It's here, Your Honor. Okay. I just handed it to him. All right. All right, sir, then there is a hold on you from the Immigration and Naturalization Service, uh, and you will continue to be held uh, in the Orange County Jail on that detainer. And I have previously uh, IA'd you yesterday on some new law offenses, and your release will be continue to be as set in those. Can I, can, can I this, have a question, please? Yes, sir. You may. You're talking about the detainer, correct? So you'll be held in uh, custody on this detainer for at least 48 hours, all right? Yeah. If ICE doesn't uh, come get you within 48 hours or whatever the conditions of release uh, were that I set yesterday on those other charges, I don't remember what they were, uh, those still remain, okay? Because I will be, I will be afraid the board, Mr. I can't understand you. City paid the bond yesterday. He, he paid the bond yesterday? Did he? Okay. Well, there is a 48-hour hold, uh, ice hold on you right now, okay? Office From this moment. The jail is indicating that you have not paid your bond. They're saying yeah. maybe that's not true, that the bond has not been paid. You need to pay your bond. Oh. This is your bond. And this is the written right here, the explanation of the application. Okay. Okay. All right, Brandon Martinez. Thank you. 
All right, uh, Mr. Martinez, I have reviewed a probable cause charging affidavit. Yes, it charges you with aggravated battery on a person over the age of 65 with a deadly weapon. It charges you with battery on a law enforcement officer, battery domestic violence, and resisting an officer with violence. I do find probable cause. <clears throat> How old are you? I'm 20 years old, ma'am. You're 20? Okay. I will appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent you in the matter. I am going to set bond, uh, and I'm going to set bond in count one in the sum of $5,000, count two in the sum of $1,000, count three, 100, count four, 100. Mr. Martinez, special conditions of your release, sir, is you may not have any contact with your grandparents. Okay? Yeah, no. Neither one. All right? Okay. You cannot go back there. So you cannot return to their residence. And Mr. Martinez, you may not be in possession of any firearms or any weapons. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Those are all conditions of your release. Do you have any questions about that? No, no. Okay, sir. All right. Thank you. Your Honor, yes. would the court authorize a one-time return accompanied by law enforcement to pick up his personal belongings? I will. I'll uh, allow you to return one time with law enforcement uh, to pick up your personal belongings, but that's not an opportunity for you to engage in conversation. Again, no contact is no contact, okay? Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you. John O'Connor? Yes, ma'am. And um, yesterday, y'all indicated that we weren't releasing anyone from the jail uh, for today. Isn't that what you told me? Sir, I've reviewed a probable cause charging affidavit that charges you with soliciting without a permit. If you wanted to enter a plea of uh, guilty to that offense, I would adjudicate you guilty, sentence you to time served, and uh, reduce your court costs to a civil judgment against you. If that's something that you want to do, you're more than welcome to do it. If you don't, then I will provisionally appoint the Office of the Public Defender, and I would leave bond in the sum of $250 in the matter. That's totally I'd love to do that first one, Your Honor. My, 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 my lady is 72 years old, and she's over at the um, Travel Lodge. I left two days ago. I left her a message at um, pre-trial, oh. and I hope she's there. She, she has Alzheimer's. I'm worried about her. She takes care of my old butt, and I love her very much. And we were trying to get food and water. She got her benefits right, this morning. What I want we're you to do, fine. though, is just read that plea form in front of you, and after you've read it, if that's still what you want to do, go ahead and sign it, okay? okay. Yes, sir. Okay. So did you have a chance to read that form? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand the rights that you're giving up? Yes, ma'am. All right, sir, then uh, I will go ahead and accept your plea. I will adjudicate you of the offense of soliciting without a permit. Thank Sentence you, ma'am. time served in jail. There are some court costs imposed, and I'm going to reduce those court costs to a civil judgment against you, all right? Thank you. All right, thank you, sir. Joseph Penland next. Is that Mr. Penland? Is that Mr. Penland? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Mr. Penland, I reviewed a probable cause charging affidavit. It charges you with destruction of evidence in possession of drug paraphernalia. I do find probable cause. 
I will appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent you in the matter, sir. As to count one, a bond will be reduced to, to the sum of $500. As to count two, it will remain at 100 Conditions of your release, sir, will be that you not be in possession of any controlled substances that are not legally and validly prescribed to you by a physician. Is there a, uh, was there a mental health screen uh, done on this gentleman? If not, I would want a mental health screen prior to. He still has a mental health detainer. I'm sorry? He still has a mental health detainer. He still has a mental health detainer? Yes. Okay. All right, I, and as I said, I'm appointing the Office of the Public Defender to represent you in the matter, sir. Anything further? No, you're all right. All right, thank you. Good luck, Mr. Daryl Mitchell. Mr. Mitchell, a judge has previously issued a warrant for your arrest having found probable cause for aggravated battery with a weapon. The issuing judge set bond at zero in that matter. I will appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent you. All right, sir, in this matter, you are entitled to bond. I will set bond in the sum of $10,000. Conditions of your release will be that you have no contact whatsoever, directly or indirectly, with the named victim. You not, you reside uh, in separate residences. You not be in possession of any weapons or any firearms. And no contact means no third party contact, no posting things on social media designed to get word to the victim. No contact is no contact, no weapons, no firearms as well if I didn't say it. Thank you. Your Honor, I was just advised that we've moved the release time up until 4 p.m. today. Okay, thank you. Mr. New? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> All right, Mr. New, I've reviewed a probable cause charging affidavit that charges you with battery on a firefighter. I do find probable cause. I will appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent you. With regard to that offense, sir, I'll reduce bond to some of $1,500. Conditions of your release will be that you not be in possession or consume any alcoholic beverages. You not visit any establishments where their primary source of revenue is from the sale of alcoholic beverages. Please know, sir, that all of the court notices will go to the address that we have listed, which we have transient. All right. It is your responsibility to keep your attorney as well as the court file updated with all proper mailing addresses so that you can get word of any future court dates. You can also check it on the website, uh, the Ninth Circuit uh, website, and go to the clerk of the court. 
per website. All right. I have appointed the Office of the Public Defender to represent you. Thank you. Henry Raymond. Sir, I've reviewed a probable cause charging affidavit that charges you with soliciting without a permit, uh, threatening a public servant, and tampering with evidence. I will find probable cause. Bond will remain in the sum of $1,000 for count one, $150 for count two, $100 for count three. I will provisionally appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent you, sir. Again, sir, please keep the court file updated as well as your attorney of all addresses. You're listed as transient, but it's your responsibility to let us know where a notice can be mailed to. Otherwise, you can look at the clerk of the court's website and check all uh, future court dates. Thank you. Okay, thank you. We'll reset Mr. Torres for tomorrow. All right, we have James Ross. Yes. All right, Mr. Ross, I've reviewed a probable cause charging affidavit. It charges you with DUI. It also charges you with resisting an officer without violence. I do find probable cause. I will appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent you. Bond on the DUI will remain at $1,000, and on the resisting, it will remain at 1000 Conditions of your release, sir, will be that you not operate a motor vehicle without a, a lawful and valid license. Also, that you not consume or imbibe uh, any alcoholic beverages, not visit any places whose primary source of revenue is from the sale of alcoholic beverages. All right. Thank you, sir. Your Honor, may I have a brief moment, Mr. Ross, before we dismiss him? You may. Your Honor, yes. Mr. Ross, at least from my notes, appears to have uh, appears to have no criminal history. Has a very low risk assessment. Uh, would the court consider lowering the bond a little bit? He doesn't uh, believe that he's going to have the financial resources to pay the full two thousand dollars that he's likely going to have to pay because uh, yeah. I believe the bonds were double because he's a citizen or a resident, I should say, of Connecticut. Yeah. 
Sir, um, in addition to that, what uh, is that had me concerned about it is the, the level of uh, anger, for lack of a better way to put it. I know you were under the influence, or the allegation is that you were under the influence. Uh, but uh, I will go ahead and grant counsel's request and reduce your bonds in each to $500 for a total of 1000 okay? All right, thank you. All right, now we have the felony DDs. Is this uh, Mr. Adolfi? Yes. All right, sir, I reviewed a probable cause charging affidavit. It charges you with aggravated assault with a firearm and battery domestic violence. I do find probable cause. I will appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent you. All right, as to uh, count one, sir, I will grant bond. Bond will be uh, in the sum of $5,000. As to count two, bond will be in the sum of $100. Conditions of your release will be that you will not have any contact whatsoever with the named victim. You will not have in your possession any firearms, any weapons. You will maintain a separate residence uh, and you will not come within 500 feet of her residence or her place of work. All right, thank you, sir. Next up, we have Adam Burns. Yes. All right, sir, I reviewed a probable cause charging affidavit. It charges you with aggravated battery on a pregnant person. It also charges you with battery domestic violence. I will find probable cause. Point the office of the public defense. No. Sir, you're incarcerated. Are you currently getting any income while you're incarcerated? Uh, no. All right. And if you're released, do you still have your job? Uh, yes. When you say yes, you're hesitating. Do you know for sure if you still have your job? I know I can still work. I just don't have transportation to my job. All right. I'm going to provisionally appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent him in this matter. Uh, sir, you indicated that you make $500 a week. Is that what you bring home? Uh, yes, ma'am. All right, and as much as he's incarcerated, I'm going to provisionally appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent him in the matter. Your Honor, he qualifies for at least a PTR. I don't know if the court's aware I'm of that, at least according to my notes. Yeah. All right, sir. Then I will go ahead and release you to pretrial release without monetary conditions. Again, I want you to have no contact 
with the name victim, directly or indirectly, and no posting things on social media designed to get word uh, to the victim, maintain separate residences, no weapons, no firearms. All right, thank you. Your Honor, before we dismiss Mr. Burns, I believe he's going to have to provide PTR with a uh, alternate address. Is that correct, PTR? Mr. Burns, do you have some more where you can go? Well, we went through this yesterday. PTR, this says no alternate address provided. So he's not going to qualify for pretrial release unless he has an alternate address. Do you have one, sir? Um, yes, I do, actually. Okay. So what is that alternate address? It's going to be 15520 Old Cheney Highway. All right. So PTR is going to have to verify that, so it'll be bond or PTR. Thank you. If you can verify uh, his address, PTR, that he's going to be staying at. Also, sir, a condition of your release, if I didn't say so previously, is that you are not to consume any alcohol and you are not to visit any establishments where their primary source uh, is, uh, their uh, primary source of income is from the sale of alcoholic beverages. While you're on pretrial release, if you're on pretrial release, then you will be subjected to random urinalyses to determine whether or not you are in fact imbibing alcohol, okay? Yes. All right. Did I not set bond before? I apologize. All right, so bond as to count one, sir, will be in the sum of $1,000. As to count two, $100. Thank you. All right, the next one I have is Eric Lopez. Yes, Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, ma'am. All right, sir, I reviewed a probable cause charging affidavit. It charges you with battery on a law enforcement officer. It charges you with resisting an officer with violence. Uh, and it also charges you with criminal mischief. I do find probable cause. I will appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent you in the matter. Bond as to uh, count one, sir, will remain in the sum of $2,500. As to count two, 150 As to count three, 100 conditions of your release will be that you not be in possession of any weapons or any firearms. I've also reviewed a probable cause charging affidavit that charges you with battery domestic violence and I do find probable cause. It also charges you with petty theft. I do find probable cause. Bond is to count one in that matter, will be in the sum of $100. As to count two, it'll be in the sum, I'm going to reduce that to $100. Special conditions, again, of your release, sir, they be that you have no contact with the named victim in the matter, you not return to the scene of the offense, you maintain separate households, and you not be in possession of any weapons, any firearms. Does he need an assist? Mm. I'm asking right now, Your Honor. No, ma'am. No, I don't. You mean what the incident happened? Yeah. Or what Where I... He does not need an assist? Okay. All right. And if I didn't say so previously, I do appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent you, sir. Your Honor, he also has an immigration hold. He has an immigration hold? Yes. All right. Sir, you do have, I'm told that you have an ICE hold or an immigration natural, 
naturalization service hold. Um, five, that'll be it. When you say he's got a hole, is he given notification, written notification, like the other gentleman yet? Yeah. yet? Okay, so he has been given written notification. Yes. Yeah. All right, so ICE will have 48 hours to uh, to get you, sir. I'm sorry, what was that, Your Honor? Immigration and Naturalization Services will have 48 hours within which to come and get you. Okay, from this point. Uh, if they don't, do you have to release? Mm -hmm. so you need a bond out. Well, yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. All right, We have the misdemeanor domestic violence is next. Cynthia Lowry? Yes. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. Ma'am, I reviewed a probable cause charging affidavit, and I do find probable cause. It charges you with uh, battery domestic violence. I will appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent you. All right, there's an alternate address that's been provided and verified. Correct. I will release you, ma'am, to pretrial release without monetary conditions. Conditions of your release will be that you have no contact with the victim in the matter. Maintain separate residence. Okay? Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you. And I am appointing the Office of the Public Defender in that in that one, overriding the clerk's uh, finding. So are you Timothy O'Neill? Yes, ma'am. Review your probable cause charging affidavit. It charges you with battery domestic violence. I do find probable cause. I'll provisionally appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent you in the matter. I will set bond in the case in the sum of $500. Conditions of your release will be that you have no contact whatsoever with the named victim, no contact directly or indirectly, no getting a word to or by means of third parties, no posting things on social media. You maintain separate residences. You will not be in possession of any firearms or any weapons. Sir, at the time that you were arrested on this offense, you were out on bond in 2019 CF 9322. I do find probable cause for uh, to believe that you violated those conditions of release. I am going to uh, forfeit and street your bond and hold you without bond in that case. All right, anything further? Yes, Your Honor, very briefly, uh, that case, I believe, is a little over 60 days old. It hasn't been charged yet. Uh, would the court consider maybe setting another bond instead of just setting it at no bond? State, um, when was the, the date of offense on the 19 CF 9322 case? Okay, and charges have not been filed yet? Not yet. All right, so I will grant your request and set bond in the sum of $2,000 in 2019 CF 9322. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Elizabeth O'Reilly. All right, ma'am, I reviewed a probable cause charging affidavit. It charges you with battery domestic violence. I do find probable cause. I will appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent you in this matter. Sir, tell me your name. Mitchell Todd. Raise your right hand to be sworn, Mr. Todd. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. All right, sir, so I'm looking here on some paperwork that I have, and it indicates that uh, you wanted to appear in court and make some statements to the court. Is that accurate? I just wanted to be clear that I want her to come home. From what I'm reading, uh, you're indicate, you indicated to law enforcement there is a history here. When I wrote that, I was slightly intoxicated and angry, so I overspoke. There is no, you're under oath. Has there been any history of domestic violence between the two of you? No, ma'am. All right, so you were both under the influence? Yes, ma'am. Are you in fear of her in any way, shape, or form? No, ma'am. All right. And if there was another incident of uh, battery against your person, or if you felt that you were in fear of that, would you uh, call law enforcement, or would you not? I handle it as best I could if it didn't get physical but I do not fear it. Okay, my question to you is would you call 911 if you were again battered, if it did get physical? Yes. All right. State, do you have any questions? No, Your Honor. All right. All right, ma'am, is that what you want? Do you want to return into the household? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Is there any past history of a mental health diagnosis, ma'am? Have you ever been diagnosed with a mental health problem? No, ma'am. All right, so I will set, uh, I will uh, release you to pretrial release in this matter. Special conditions, ma'am, will be that you have no hostile contact. That means no yelling, no screaming, no punching, no kicking, no hostile contact. Do you understand that? Yes, ma'am. If you violate the terms of that release, you may be subjected to being arrested again on a no bond warrant and being placed back in jail. Do you understand that? Yes, ma'am. All right, also conditions of your release will be that you will not consume or imbibe any alcoholic beverages or visit any establishments where their primary uh, source of revenue is from the sale of alcoholic beverages. Do you understand that? Yes, ma'am. I am going to have you randomly tested through pretrial release for the presence of alcohol in your, sub, in your system, so you will be subjected to random urinalysis. Do you understand that? Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you. Thank you both. You do need a transport order? State on that juvenile, we do need a transport order. Could you give him your email address so he could email it to you? I think you have it. I'll email it to you. Okay. okay. If you could email that transport order and then I'll sign off on it when you print it off.
Lester Pasqua. Yes, ma'am. All right, come on up. So are you here for Lester Pasqua? All right, so I reviewed a probable cause charging affidavit. It charges you with domestic violence battery. I do find probable cause. I will appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent you in the matter. All right, ma'am, uh, raise your right hand to be sworn in, please. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Tell me your name. Lori Lynn Quaton. All right, and Ms. Quaton, from what I'm reading here, you have uh, been living together with uh, Mr. Pasqua for a number of years, and you have children in common? Yes, ma'am. What is it that you want to tell me, ma'am? Um, I just want him home um, because um, it's his first time, and I just want him to give a chance because our children is waiting for him. How old are your children? Um, Ten and eight. Ma'am, uh, you are under oath. Has there been any past history of domestic violence between the two of you? No. It's, it's just our fir first time. All right. Are you in fear of your... Have you, are you in fear of the father of your children? No. And if, in fact, uh, anything happened again uh, like this, would you call 911 or would you not? I will call 911. All right, sir, do you want to go back into the home? Yes. All right, State, do you have any additional questions? Uh, not right now. No. All right. All right, sir, so you do qualify for pretrial release. I will release you to pretrial release with the understanding that there is to be no hostile contact between the two of you, and that means no yelling, no screaming, no punching, no kicking. Do you understand that? Yes, ma'am. You have children in common, and your children don't need that. Yes, ma'am. Law enforcement doesn't need to respond to your home. You understand that? Yes, ma'am. All right. I will not allow you to consume any alcoholic beverages or uh, visit any establishments where their primary uh, sale, is, their source of revenue is from the sale of alcoholic beverages. I'm going to have you randomly tested through pretrial release for the presence of alcoholic beverages in your system. Do you understand all of that? Yes, ma'am. All right, I've appointed the Office of the Public Defender, sir. Please keep them updated as to any changes of address if that occurs. All right, thank Your you, Your Honor, yes. he also has an ICE detainer. Oh, he does. Hang on one second. All right, sir, I'm told that you also have a uh, ICE hold on you. Uh, you will be detained for 48 hours to determine whether or not uh, they come pick you up, okay? Okay. All right, thank you. Next one up I have is uh, Patel. Yes, ma'am. Patel. Okay. <laughs> All right, so I reviewed a probable cause charging affidavit that charges you with battery domestic violence. I do find probable cause. I'll provisionally appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent you in the matter. Ma'am, tell me your name. Hannah Patel. Raise your right hand to be sworn in. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. All right, ma'am. What is it that you want to tell the court? Um, that I'm ready for him to come home. And this was the first time this has ever happened, and we'll make sure it doesn't happen again. 
and you say this is the first time it's ever happened, you're under oath. Is there any history of domestic violence between the two of you in the past prior to this? No, ma'am. You have no children in common? Correct. All right, sir, do you want to return to the residence? Yep. Uh, yes, ma'am. All right, so I'm going to release you to pretrial release with the following understanding, sir. You are to have no hostile contact, and that means no yelling, no screaming, no punching, no kicking. Do you understand all of that? Yes, ma'am. All right, law enforcement has much better things to do during this hurricane than come out to your residence to respond to a domestic violence call. Do you understand that? Yes. All right, because alcohol was involved, sir, I'm going to, as a condition of your pretrial release, require that you submit to random urinalyses. I do not want you in possession of any alcoholic beverages or visit any establishments where their primary source of revenue is from the sale of alcoholic beverages, okay? Do you have any questions about any of that, sir? No, ma'am. All right, thank you. Next is Willie Braxton. You, Mr. Braxton? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I don't. Oh, here it is. Um, is it Mr. White? Yes. Uh, Braxton White. Okay, thank yes. you. Yes. All right, sir, you need a probable cause charging affidavit that charges you with domestic violence battery. I do find probable cause. I will provisionally appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent you in this matter. PTR victim contact was made, uh, and it says same victim from previous case. So there is a history of domestic violence between these two. And when you say he's eligible for pretrial release, is there an alternate address? No. He already maintains different residence. They already maintain separate residences? Correct. Okay. All right, sir, so I'll release you to pretrial release with the understanding that you will to have no contact with the victim in the matter not directly, not indirectly. You will maintain separate residences. You will not be in possession of any weapons or any firearms. And I have provisionally appointed the Office of the Public Defender to represent you in the matter. Thank you, sir. I don't need a copy, but it's going to have to be scanned into the system in some way, shape, or form. And Madam Clerk, I don't know since, yeah. Let me do this. Give me uh, two, and then I'll retain a, a copy and uh, make sure that it gets filed. All right, so next up we have Ronald Williams. All right. So you've verified her date of birth is 116.99, and it's Shea Lee Smith that I have. Uh, 
I've got a DOB of 116.99. No, that's the one that she gave. Right. Okay, so what is her correct DOB? But her name is Shea Lee Smith, correct? That's correct. Okay. I'm sorry? Sir, I reviewed a probable cause charging affidavit that charges you with the domestic violence battery and battery. No. All right, I did find probable cause. I will appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent no you in the matter. No. No matter. No. All right, sir, a bond will be set in count one in the sum of $500, count two, $500. Conditions of your release will be that you have no contact whatsoever with the named victims in the matter, that you not return to the scene of the offense, and that you not, in, not be in possession of any weapons or any firearms. All right. Thank you, sir. Your Honor, he may need a one-time return if I remember the facts of the case correctly. I believe this happened where he lives. Right. Is that correct? Do you need uh, the assistance of law enforcement for a one-time return? <coughs> Let's you collect any personal effects? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I think you will. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Is he saying yeah? Yes. Yes, Your Honor. Hmm. All right. So I will uh, grant a one-time return with law enforcement for the purposes of personal effects. <laughs> <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Woods. All right, before we do the felonies, I just need a, a little bit of a recess. I'm just going to take a 10-minute break.
Okay, so let's go back on the record. We have Kingsley Barconi. <clears throat> Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Right, sir, review the probable cause charging affidavit. It charges you with possession of NDMA. I do find probable cause. I'll appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent you in the matter. The bond set at $1,000. <clears throat> while out on bond, you were, uh, excuse me, you were detained for this while out on bond, and it was for possession of MDMA, ecstasy, ecstasy and cannabis. In uh, 2019 CF 9152. Finding probable cause, I will um, forfeit and street your bond in that matter. I'll hear from you as to bond. Do you have any requests as to bond? No, Your Honor. I didn't have an opportunity to check to see whether this case was charged, but if it's not charged, I would add, I would make the same request that I made in the last case. Take in the a look at case. this, please. 2000, uh, 19 CF 9152. Yes, no charges have been filed. And what was the date of offense on that? June 26, 2019. Okay. I'll grant bond in the matter, sir. I'll double it to $2,200 uh, in the case that you were out on bond. Okay. I am appointing the Office of the Public Defender to represent you. Please stay in close contact with the attorney from that office. You've also been detained on a violation of a domestic violence injunction. <clears throat> failure to appear for that offense. The issuing magistrate uh, set bond at $850 in that matter. Bond will remain with all of the conditions as well, which would include uh, no contact. I'll add to that, you are not to be in possession of any weapons or any firearms. I'll add that as a condition to the violation uh, case, okay? All right, thank you, sir. All right, so it's uh, would be count one would be a thousand, count two would be eleven hundred, not really eleven hundred count one, eleven hundred count two for a total of twenty two on the out on bond case. Stanley, Canada? Yes, ma'am. All right, so you've been detained on a warrant for failure to appear. Count one is burglary of a structure. Count two is criminal mischief. Count three is petty theft. The allegation is a failure to appear at pretrial conference. The issuing magistrate set bond at zero in that matter. Bond will remain. If not previously appointed, I will appoint the Office of the Public Defender <clears throat> to represent you in this matter. Are you uh, Chris Chiru? He bonded, Your Honor. Okay. Mr. Chiru bonded. Are you Aaron Davis? Yes.
All right, sir, review the probable cause charging affidavit that charges you with possession of cocaine. It also charges you with an ordinance violation of being in Clear Lake Park after hours, from sunrise to sunset. I will find probable cause for both. Sir, your affidavit reflects that you bring home $900 every week. Is that what your income, your take home is? Yes. All right, and do you still have your job if you are released? Yes. Okay. All right, so you don't qualify for the services of a court appointed attorney. Um, so do know that you are entitled to have an attorney through each stage of the litigation. If the state files charges on you in this case, uh, then you might want to, or even before they do, you might want to visit an attorney, okay, and talk to them about the matter. I will find that you do not qualify for the services of a court appointed attorney. Uh, in as much as you don't have uh, any prior Florida conviction history that I'm seeing, sir, I'm going to, uh, on count one, reduce bond to the sum of $500 as to count two, 50. There'll be a total bond of $550. Conditions of your release will be that you will not uh, go back to that park. Uh, and obviously that you will not be in possession of any controlled substances that are not legally and validly prescribed to you by a physician. <clears throat> All right, thank you, sir. Thank you. Jerry Delaire. All right, sir, review the probable cause charging affidavit that charged you with grand theft motor vehicle. I do find probable cause. <coughs> I will appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent you in the matter. Bond is set at $1,000 and it will remain. However, sir, at the time of the arrest in this matter, you were out on bond in 2019 CF 11613 for grand theft motor vehicle as well as 2000. 19 CT 6060 for driving on a suspended license <coughs> and uh, CT 6062 uh, for no motor vehicle registration. I am going to forfeit and street your bonds on those uh, cases and uh, as to 2019 CF 11613, sir, hold you without bond. As to the driving on a suspended license case in 2019, CT 6060, hold you without bond. And as to the 2019, CT 6062, set bond in the sum of $1,000 <coughs> in that matter. All right, thank you, sir. The uh, last CT one, the one for no vehicle registration. Your Honor, the uh, current case, 19 CF 12488, bond was set at? A thousand. I just let stated at a thousand. Stated at a thousand, okay. All right, thank you, sir.
state in uh, Ms. Um, Jackson's case, is the only store that uh, is involved in the theft here to be the, the Zoomies? It says I observed about seven Tommy Hilfiger items and new tags. Never mind. All right, ma'am, I have reviewed a probable cause charging affidavit that charges you with grand theft, third degree, and resisting an officer without violence in one, and petty theft, uh, retail petty theft in another. I do find probable cause as to each. <clears throat> I will appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent you. Bond in the grand theft third degree case will remain in the sum of 500. It will be 100 in the resisting. As to the retail theft, it will remain $500. Conditions of your release will be that you not return to either scene of the offense, to the Tommy Hilfingers or the Zoomies. <coughs> you have no contact with a co defendant in the matter. <coughs> I am appointing the Office of the Public Defender to represent you. Time of this offense, ma'am, you were out on bond in Osceola County case 2019 CF 922 for the offense of grand theft third degree. I will forfeit and revoke your bond, excuse me, forfeit and treat your bond as to that case and hold you without bond in that matter. All right, thank you. The owner, so the monetary bonds in this case are 100, 500. They remained a set. Um, it was. We have two cases. 500, 100, okay. and then on the other 500. <clears throat> John Judkins is next. All right, Mr. Jenkins, I've reviewed a probable cause charging affidavit, sir, that charges you with a robbery. I do find probable cause. There is also a warrant that was executed for your arrest for failure to appear at time of pretrial conference in case number 2018-CF15310. The underlying charge on the charge on that being possession of cocaine. The issuing magistrate previously uh, set bond at zero in that matter. Bond will remain. In the robbery case, bond will remain in the sum of $5,000. I do appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent you in the matter, sir. Matters, thank you. Sir, I've reviewed a probable cause charging affidavit that charges you with possession of cocaine. I do find probable cause. I will appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent you in the matter. Bond will remain in the sum of $1,000. However, sir, at the time of this arrest you were out on bond in 2019 CF 10396 and 2019 CF 10400 and the first was the charge of grand theft motor vehicle 
And then the second was burglary of a conveyance and petty theft. Finding probable cause, I will forfeit and street your bonds and hold you in a no bond status as to each case. Thank you, sir. All right, so I reviewed a probable cause charging affidavit that charges you with possession of cocaine with an intent to sell or deliver possession of cocaine. Uh, it charges you with possession of drug paraphernalia times four. the defense wish to be heard with respect to the whether it can one. be I'm looking at count one state correct me if I'm wrong the uh, cocaine here that's recovered is uh, three pieces so it's three small pieces of cocaine broken into equal weighing amount That's correct. Okay. So do you have any argument with regard to probable cause as to count one? Where bond is fifteen thousand dollars. Maybe I'm missing something here, but I'm hard pressed to find where the officer obtains probable cause for intent to deliver or sell from three pieces of crack. Yes, the state would agree. Okay. All right, I don't find probable causes to count one. He will be released on his own recognizance as to count one. I do find probable cause, sir, as to counts two through six. As to count two, your bond will be increased from $150 to $3,500. He will remain at $100 as to counts three through six. <clears throat> I do appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent you in the matter. Conditions of your release will be that you um, not uh, be in possession of any controlled substances that are not legally and validly prescribed to you by a physician. Thank you, sir.
are you Mr. Lewis? Mr. Lewis, I reviewed a probable cause charging affidavit. It charges you with burglary of a conveyance. I do find probable cause. I will appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent you in the matter. Yeah, he said that, but I think he had the Sir, wrong. Sir, oh, do do you have a Fifth Amendment right to remain silent. You have an attorney to your left. All right, anything that you want to tell the court, you might want to run through him first. Everything here is being recorded. Anything that you do say about the facts of the case could be used against you in the future, okay? So just give me a moment while I look at something. All right. Bond will remain in the matter in the sum of $3,500. Conditions of your release, sir, will be that you do not have any contact with any named victims in the matter. You do not return to the scene of the offense. All right, thank you. Brittany Manuel would be the next one, right? Um, Your Honor, Manuel's behavior. Okay, so Brittany Manuel's behavior. Reset to tomorrow. Are you Mr. McGee? Yes. Mr. McGee, I've reviewed a probable cause charging affidavit. It charges you with possession of cocaine and drug paraphernalia. I do find probable cause. I will uh, leave bond in the sum of $1,000, count one. $500 in count two. Appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent you. Time of this offense, you were out on bond in 2019 CF 6863 for the offense of aggravated battery causing great bodily harm. You were also out on bond in 2019 CF 9015 for the offenses of possession of cocaine and possession of drug paraphernalia. Finding probable cause, I do revoke your release status, forfeit and street your bonds in each case, and you'll be held without bond in each of those two cases. Um, let me inquire though, on 2019 CF 9015, there it says bond amount 33 day motion PCR, what is, what is that that you're trying to advise the court that a 33 day motion was filed in the matter? Was granted and he was released RR. So he was actually released RR, so that when it says surety bond, that's incorrect, right? Correct. Okay. So I'll forfeit your release, or revoke your release status of ROR in that case. State, have you filed on 2019 CF 9015? And if not, what's the uh, date of offense? Yes, the state filed on count one possession of cocaine. Okay. And the uh, date of offense is June 23rd. Okay. All right. Thank you. Nicholas Babone. Mr. Bennett, I reviewed a probable cause charging affidavit that charges you with possession of cocaine, possession of drug paraphernalia, possession of a dairy case, and possession of alcohol. On sidewalk, street, or alleyways, 
I do not find probable cause for count three. I will release you on your own recognizance as to count three. Yes. As to counts one, two, and four, bond will remain as set. Actually, as to count one, I'm going to reduce bond to some of uh, Madam Clerk a thousand dollars. As to count three, it'll remain at a hundred. Count four will remain at a hundred. However, sir, at the time of your release, you were out on pretrial release in 2019 MM6285. That was a charge of battery domestic violence. Having found probable cause, sir, I am going to uh, revoke your release status in that case and hold you without bond in that misdemeanor case. I am appointing the Office of the Public Defender to represent you. Your Honor, I think he was out on PTR in the uh, in the battery DV case. Not that that's not a bond, because it is, but I was wondering if the court would consider, in light of the uh, dissimilarity between the offenses, maybe setting a monetary bond. <coughs> or we can continue with the PTR plus bond if. Well, he did violate conditions of release, uh, or there's an allegation that he violated conditions of release by this new law offense. But uh, given the fact that he appeared to be kind of minding his own business when law enforcement approached, I'll go ahead and grant your request, okay? Thank you. And uh, I will grant bond in 2019 MM 6285 in the sum of $500. Again, sir, you not to have any contact with the named victim in that battery case and all other conditions of release with regard to that battery case remain in full force and effect. Yes, ma'am. Okay. You gotta pay a bond. You gotta pay it. Yeah. How much? Just some things. Isaiah Portella. He bonded, Your Honor. Okay. Portella bonded. Do we have Mr. Price next? Yes. All right, so I've reviewed a probable cause charging affidavit that charges you with uh, aggravated battery on a law enforcement officer. It charges you in count two with resisting an officer without violence. <clears throat> As to resisting an officer without violence, I do find probable cause. Um, the PC affidavit indicates that this gentleman allegedly kicked Officer Petula in the right shin with his left leg and that Officer Petula had a footprint from the dirt on his pants but he did not sustain any injuries. <coughs> um, it's charged up as aggravated uh, battery. Um, I'm not seeing any aggravating facts, no injuries. 
please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, the, the state would agree if the court right. would find PC for battery on law enforcement officer, otherwise next time officer. I do find uh, probable cause for uh, the lesser included offense of battery on a law enforcement officer. I will set bonds for the sum of $3,500 as to that count. It will remain in the sum of $100 as to the other. I will provisionally appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent you. Special conditions of your release will be that you not be in uh, possession of any alcohol uh, any, of any kind, all right? You not visit any places where their primary source of revenue is from the sale of alcoholic beverages. Hang on one second. In terms of um, the other things that are alleged to have been going on, <clears throat> do you live at 802 Pink Camilla Court? Yes. And were there, was there any uh, other charges that came against you, to your knowledge, out of uh, this incident, other no. than the battery on law enforcement officers? No, no. Right. So I'm also going to order, sir, that you have no hostile contact uh, with uh, any individuals who you may who you may reside with uh, at 802 Pink Camilla Court. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Thank you, sir. Sir, have you had a probable cause charging affidavit that charges you with possession of heroin, possession of, of uh, <coughs> cocaine, uh, grand theft motor vehicle, <coughs> and uh, possession of drug paraphernalia? I do find a probable cause. I will appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent you in that matter. In that matter, bond will remain as set. $1,000 count one, 150 count two, 150 count three, and 100 in count four. Special conditions will be that you not return to the scene of the offense. Obviously not be in possession of any controlled substances that are not legally and validly prescribed to you by a physician. You've also been detained for a warrant based on a failure to appear at a status hearing on the charges of possession of cocaine and possession of drug paraphernalia in case number 2018-CF-9945. Having found probable cause, excuse me, had the court, issuing court uh, having issued a warrant for your arrest in the amount of zero bond, it will remain. You were also out on release in 2019-CF-6707 for the offenses of possession of fentanyl, resisting an officer without violence, providing false identification to law enforcement, and possession of controlled substance. You were released on your own recognizance on June the 11th. Having found probable cause to believe you violated the conditions of your release, I will hold you without bond in that case number. And I believe I previously appointed the Office of the Public Defender to represent you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Stubbs. 
Yes, ma'am. All right, Mr. Stubbs, I've reviewed a probable cause charging affidavit that charges you with carrying a concealed weapon by a convicted felon and 13 counts of possession of ammunition by a convicted felon. Unlawful discharge of a firearm and possession of cannabis. I do find probable cause, sir. As to count one, bond will remain in the sum of $5,000. As to count two. Your Honor. Yes. May I be briefly heard about the possession of ammunition charge? You may. Uh, the ammunition is defined at least unless something has changed as one or more bullets. Is it defined as one or more? I believe so, yes. I can double check, but unless something has changed, it has always been uh, a mass noun, so whether it's one bullet or 50, unless it's a different type of bullet, it would all be the same. And I believe that's in the uh, latter part of 790, the first subsection where the definitions are. I'm not seeing ammunition defined. In the definitions? Mm -hmm. It should be towards the bottom. It's not an alphabetical order. Okay. You're right, it's not an alphabetical order. Your Honor, I, I did look it up and it, I can verify that ammunition is defined as one or more bullets. I'm looking at it, subsection 19. Yeah. It is the last one, as counsel indicates. All right, so I will not find probable cause as to counts three.
14. So he'll be released on his own recognizance as to counts 3 through 14. Bond will remain in the sum of $150 as to count 2. Bond will remain in count 15 and 16 as set in the sum of $100 each. I previously appointed the Office of the Public Defender, sir, to represent you in the matter. Conditions of your release are obviously that you will not be in possession of any firearms. You will not be in possession of any ammunition. Please stay in close contact with your attorney from the Office of the Public Defender. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, I have Bobby Turk. Bobby Turk is medical, Your Honor. Is he medical? Okay. We second him tomorrow. And this is Mr. Villaro? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Villaro, I reviewed a probable cause charging affidavit that charged you with grand theft motor vehicle and driving on suspended license as a habitual traffic offender. Do <clears throat> you have any printout with him on David PTR? I do find probable cause, sir, for a grand theft motor vehicle. Or did you hear me on the David? I didn't know if you heard me. John, are you waiting on us? No, I'm waiting on okay. just a, I just wanted to verify what PTR has down here, that there was several past convictions of Willis. <clears throat> All right, sir, according to the David printout, uh, you have been previously designated as a habitual traffic offender. Having been previously adjudicated for driving on a suspended license, as well as not adjudicated on it. So I will find probable cause for driving on a suspended license. Bond will remain as set as $1,000 in count one, $2,500 in count two. I will appoint the Office of the Public Defender. 
special conditions of your release, sir, will be that you not operate a motor vehicle without a valid and lawful license. So we stated in the summons, it was uh, pounds in count one, $2,500 count two. Next up, I have Alicia Wolf Carnley. Carnley? Your name, ma'am? Alicia Wolf. All right, ma'am. There was a warrant that was issued for your arrest for failure to appear at arraignment. I will uh, stay the amount. The court did not set bond in that matter. Point the Office of the Public Defender to represent you. Thank um, you. Also, I had. Um I had contacted my bail bondsman on that, and my bail bondsman had contacted the judge on that case, and the case, she said, reset me another court date on the 19th of this month. So that was supposed, that TPS was supposed to be lifted, and I don't think it ever got put into the system to where it was supposed to be lifted. Could you do me a favor and look up 2019 CF 10932? She was supposed to send me one for September 19, 2019 in courtroom 90 at 9 a.m. Because I missed my court gate court case due to my um, misspelling of my last name. Ma'am, there is a status hearing set for the court date that you indicate with Judge Beamer. However, I have reviewed uh, a letter from your bondsman saying that there was a miscommunication or misunderstanding with your arraignment date of August the 22nd. So what I'm going to do is, what was that date she has in front of Judge Beamer again on the status? September the 19th. So September, the, what time? September the 19th, you do have a 9 a.m. status, so you must be there or you will run the risk of the court issuing another warrant yes, for your arrest. So I'm going to set bond in the matter. I'm going to set it in the sum of $500, okay, okay. with that understanding, okay? Yes, ma'am. All right, the public defender's office has been previously appointed, but they will be reappointed if the uh, case, if they need to be. Thank you, Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Barrett, you were detained on uh, a warrant for failure to appear at derailment on a petty theft charge to issue a magistrate set bond in the sum of $1,500. Bond will remain and stayed in that amount. The Office of the Public Defender is appointed to represent you in the matter. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think the other judge would have to give you a free trial. Thank you. Lewis James? Yes, ma'am.
All right, PTR, can you just uh, confirm, please, that David, I don't need you to print the whole thing out. We can be good. All right, thank you. All right, so I reviewed a probable cause charging affidavit that charges you with driving while license suspended. Subsequent offense, according to the David printout, there is a, a suspension in 2017. I will find probable cause. At the time of this offense, sir, you were out on bond in 2019, MM493, for the offense of trespass. Finding probable cause, I will forfeit and street your bond in that matter. I will set bond in a new amount of a thousand dollars as to that trespass the office of the public defender is appointed to represent you yeah and the bond you know, on the uh, driving charge was five hundred dollars did i hear that correctly yes if i didn't say so then the bond would be stayed in the amount of five hundred dollars on the driving on a suspended license Mr. Williams, Ernest Williams, is he behind you? Are you Mr. Williams? Yes. All right. Mr. Williams, I reviewed a probable cause charging affidavit that charges you with driving under the influence. I do find probable cause. I will appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent you in the matter. Bond is set, sir, in the sum of $500. Conditions of your release will be that you not operate a motor vehicle without a valid and legal license you not be in possession of any alcoholic beverages, you not visit places where their primary source of revenue is from the sale of alcoholic beverages. Do you understand all of that? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Your Honor, very briefly, uh, Mr. Williams was telling me that he does not believe he's going to have the financial resources to bond out until Friday. Uh, he doesn't appear to have much of any history from what I see. Would the court consider releasing him on his own recognizance? Not given what I read, I will not. Okay. All right, thank you. I have two jobs I like to work. I don't want to miss work. You can tell it. Go ahead. Yeah, Your Honor, I'm sorry. He had something that he wanted to share with you. Yes, sir. Go ahead, Mr. Williams. Yes, ma'am. I do work two jobs, and I like very much to get back to work. Um, that's my only source of uh, income, and I get paid on Friday. And sir, I'm really concerned about a couple of things. First of all, you don't qualify for pretrial release, so I don't have anybody that is going to supervise you and make sure that you don't uh, consume alcohol, number one. But I'm number not two, alcoholic. I don't have anybody to... Uh, tell me whether or not you're going to be driving even though I've told you that you cannot yes okay uh, and I'm concerned that you might get behind the wheel again and uh, oh you don't further. want me to drive I don't want you to drive okay I'm concerned about my vehicle because it's out in a public place I like to be able to bring it to my place I mean I don't want it to be vandalized yeah. let me see his affidavit again
All right, sir. Um, So are you employed with Orlando Housing Authority? Yes, ma'am. And are you a, a, a contractor for them? Or are you on their payroll? Um, I work through an agency called Tap Talent. I've been working with them for about three years. Uh, I'm an air conditioning and refrigeration technician for them. And I would imagine driving is required in, in your employment, correct? Yes, well, I can drive, but someone else can take me where I, sometimes I have a partner that drives also. And I do work um, as a security guard at night, at least two or three days out of the week. Okay. All right, sir. Then I will uh, go ahead and amend your conditions of release as follows. I will release you on your own recognizance, and that's based on no uh, Florida conviction history, as well as your service in the military. And I am uh, going to also uh, say this. As far as your operation of a motor vehicle, you may not operate a motor vehicle without a valid and lawful license. So if your privilege to drive is not suspended through this action, then I'll allow you to continue to operate a motor vehicle. Do you yes. understand that? Yes, But I'm very serious when I say, sir, that you cannot imbibe any alcohol. You cannot operate a motor vehicle under the influence of any alcohol, not even a drop of it. Do you understand that? Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you, sir. Destiny Brand. I reviewed a probable cause charging affidavit that charges you with retail theft from Walmart. I do find probable cause. I will appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent you. And I'm going to release you to pretrial release with the condition that you not return to any Walmart in the United States. Do you understand that? Yes. All right, thank you. Ron Wandondo. Yes, ma'am. All right, sir, I uh, reviewed a probable cause uh, charging affidavit that charges you with the possession of drug uh, paraphernalia or equipment, and I do find probable cause as to that. Bond will be set or remain in the sum of $500. I do appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent you in the matter. Yes, it remain a set. Sir, at the time of this offense, you're out on a bond in 2019 CF 1728 for the offenses of aggravated battery with a deadly weapon in possession of cocaine. I uh, do find uh, probable cause to believe that you violated the conditions of your release and I will forfeit and street your bond as to that matter. 
he had a bond originally as ten thousand dollars in um, count one and one hundred and fifty in count two based on what I'm reading in the probable cause charging affidavit on the new law offense, if he's interested, I would be agreeable to bond, but it's going to have to be double. So it would be 20 on count one and 300 on count two. The state only filed on one count, Your Honor, possession of cocaine. State only, you didn't charge on the aggravated battery? That's correct. The state only filed on uh, the possession of Okay. All right, sir, we voted and distributed your bond, and I will set bond in the possession of cocaine. Uh, in the uh, action, I'm going to set bond in that case in the sum of a thousand dollars. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Your Honor, the bonds are 500, 100, and a thousand. It's 500, 500 for a thousand, and then a thousand in the in the other case. Okay. Thank so you. So he's got a total of two thousand dollar bond. Okay. Mark Fall? Yes, ma'am. Sir, I'm looking at a probable cause charging affidavit that charges you with trespass after warning. All right, I do find probable cause. If he wanted to enter a plea, it would be an adjudication, time served, court costs, reduced to judgment. Yes, yes. yes ma'am. Read that plea form, sir. If that's I've, what you want to do after you've read the plea form, you can go ahead and sign it. Okay. Thank you. Oh. All right, sir, you may not return to that McDonald's. Do you understand that? Yes, ma'am. Not even through the parking lot. Uh, not even using it as a cut through. You may not return. No, ma'am. Okay, did you sign that plea form, sir? Yes, I did. All right. Did you understand it? Yes, ma'am. All right, I will adjudicate you guilty of the offense, sentence you to time served, impose court costs, reduce those court costs to a judgment, and again, you may not return to that McDonald's. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Ernest Hartfield? Yes, ma'am. Sir, so reviewed a probable cause charging affidavit that charges you with trespass on property after warning and possession of drug paraphernalia. I do find probable cause. I will appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent you in the matter, sir. And bond will remain in count one at 500, count two in the sum of $100. All right, thank you. Your Honor, these are pleable offenses. Mr. Hartfield has an interest in resolving the case today. Would the court consider accepting a plea? From reading the probable cause charging affidavit, it appears that this is a repeated thing with this particular 7-Eleven. No, ma'am. So my concern is that you're going to ignore the court's orders and just continue to go back to that particular 7-Eleven if I let you out.
Yeah, no, I'm sorry, were you waiting for us? Yeah, I would need a response to him, from him about returning to the 7-Eleven. Your Honor, uh, well, I would have to proffer on his behalf. He's slightly paraphrased because it would be in the form of an admission if he were to say it. Well, I'm not. I'm just asking him that his, for his commitment not to go back there. I'm not asking for him to make any culpatory statements. Okay. Do you understand you can't go back there? Right. Okay. No matter what relationship you may have had with anybody there, you can't go back, okay? All right. All right, sir, is that what you want to do? You want to enter a plea to the possession of drug paraphernalia as well as the trespass after warning with the understanding that it will go on your record, both of those? Yes, ma'am. All right. All right, I'll adjudicate him guilty, sentence him to time, sir, reduce it to court costs with the understanding that he will not go back to that 7-Eleven. All right, sir, I'm not finished with you. Oh, Did you uh, read that form? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand it, sir? Yes, ma'am. And is that what you want to do, enter a plea? Yes, ma'am. All right. All right, sir, I will adjudicate you guilty of each offense since you concurrently the time served in jail and reduce the court costs to civil judgment against you. And again, I am ordering you not to return to 3974 South Orange Blossom Trail to 7-Eleven, okay? Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you. Mr. Jones? Right ahead, Press. Mr. Jones is behaving well. Okay. We'll reset Mr. Jones for tomorrow. All right, um, this is a charge where he's charged with petty theft uh, out of the premier adult store, superstore, disorderly intox, and possession of alcohol in public. I do find probable cause. All right. Um, I mean, this is in the pleables, a retail theft? It is, Your Honor. Usually, uh, unless the state objects because it's enhanceable for some reason. Sir, if you wanted to enter a plea to it, uh, obviously you would not be able to go back to the Premier Adult Superstore, uh, but I would be sentencing you in this matter to 10 days in jail. You've got credit for however much you've got in. If you don't want to take that offer, then I would uh, re leave bond as set in some of $500 in count one, 100 in count two, 100 in count three. I want to go to court because I didn't, I didn't commit. That lady's telling me all, all lies. Those are not true. Okay. And All right. If I go to court, I want her to get arrested for a false statement. All right. And I also want him screened for mental health jail. All right. I want him screened through mental health if he hasn't already been. Has he already been? Yes, I have. He was previously okay. screened. All right. All right. Thank you, sir. Ralphie Antonor? Yes. That's me. Mr. Antonor, 
you were detained on an out of county warrant from Polk County. Looks like the failure to appear. Bond is set in that sum in that uh, case in the sum of five hundred dollars. Okay. All right, bond will remain. Yeah, they should come get you uh, hopefully within the next forty eight hours. Okay. Oh, if you don't bond out, the jail's gonna tell folks to come get you. All right, and Javon Mason is next. Yes, ma'am. All right, Mr. Mason, there's a warrant uh, that was executed on you f out of uh, Polk County. Issuing magistrate to set it for no bond. Sir, it will remain. Hopefully, you'll be picked up in the next 48 hours. So how long do they have to come get me? How long does Polk County have to come get me? Because it was, actually, I was in surgery at the time of the um, the court date, and I actually sent papers to my public defender, and I spoke to a court official at, um, at Polk County. And I sent over my paperwork, and I actually still have like the stitches and my paperwork, well, my you know, discharge we've, we've papers. We've got the the hurricane going on and everything, but if they don't come get you in the next 48 hours, let the jail staff know, okay? And uh, we'll have you back up here, okay? Ashley Smart. <laughs> yes, ma'am. reviewed a probable cause charging affidavit that charges you with driving on a suspended license with knowledge due to the statements contained in the affidavit I do find probable cause so you're on felony probation at the time of this offense Two thousand nineteen CF seven twenty. Madam Clerk. Alright, here's the video. All right, so ma'am, I'm uh, going to find probable cause to believe that you were in violation of the terms and conditions of your probation in 2019-720. I do appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent you in the 2019 CF-720 case. I will set bond. I'll set it in the sum of $1,000 in that case. Conditions of your release will be that you not operate a motor vehicle without a valid and legal license. Report to your probation officer within 24 hours, 24 business hours, okay? 
Yes, I bet you paid in, in the amount. I thought I did. Yeah. If I didn't say so, the driver on a suspended license case bond is stayed in the sum of $500. She's not to operate a motor vehicle without a valid driver's license. She's to report to probation within 24 business hours of her release. Is this uh, Wilma Roll? Yes. Good afternoon, ma'am. Ma'am, I reviewed a probable cause charging affidavit. It charges you with an ordinance violation of being in a park after hours. I do find probable cause. All right, if she wanted to enter a plea to it, I would adjudicate her and sentence her to time served. But ma'am, you cannot go back to that uh, park with it, the Lake Fairview Park, okay? If that's what you want to do, you can uh, go ahead and talk to the attorney to your left about it. If you don't, I'll just leave bonds set in the sum of $250. Um, um. And appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent you. I, I have. I, I don't want to be a pest, but I, I had um, required for the, the charges to be dropped because at the time, my I get paid that same that same evening, and I had already told um, a group of cops that was there um, prior to the um, proactive patrol that I get paid on the third. And so they said, okay, so you're gonna stay until you get paid. And I said, just because I don't have gas and my, I had a dead battery, but I normally park at the Walmart in, in the nighttime and in daytime, I just go by the park because I live in my vehicle. Um, I, I live in my vehicle and I go at the park in the afternoon and I watch the boats and the, and the jet skis. So, and then in the nighttime, I go to Walmart, but I got stuck being that I was out of cash at that. So you're saying you spoke to somebody previously about yes. permission to be there? Yes. Yeah. Well, it's up to the state of Florida as to whether they drop the charges or not. I don't have that uh, power or authority. Um, I hear what you're saying. Matt, I would probably go ahead and release you on your own recognizance if you don't want to enter a plea to it, given everything that you've told me. State, are you in a position where you want to look into it further, or do you want to dismiss the charges at this point? The state will ask uh, to look into it further, and the public defender contact the assigned prosecutor in the case. Okay. All right, ma'am, I'm going to release you on your own recognizance, but um, I do not, again, want you returning to the Lake Fairview Park, okay? So you're going to have to find somewhere else to park your vehicle. I will appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent you in the matter, okay? All right, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Last one I have is Christopher Rule. Good afternoon, sir. I reviewed a probable cause charging affidavit that charges you with solicitation without a permit. I do find probable cause. Sir, if you wanted to enter a plea to it, I would just adjudicate you, uh, sentence you to time served, and impose court costs and reduce it to a civil judgment. You clearly don't have to do that. Uh, if you don't want to do that, then I would appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent you. Yes, I'd like to do that. You want to take uh, the, the plea? Yes. Read that plea form, please, after you've read it. Sign it. Okay.
Mr. To be fair, I also want to tell you that I would not allow you to return to 436 and um, um, Aloma Avenue, okay? You can't utilize that corner, okay? You're shaking your head yes. You yes, understand that? yes. Okay. All right, sir, is this your signature? Yes. All right. All right, sir, I will go ahead and adjudicate you guilty of the offense, sentence you to time served, impose court costs, reduce them to a civil judgment, in order that you not return to the intersection of 436 and Aloma. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good luck, Mr. Rome. All right, that's all we have. All right, and tomorrow, um,